everybody. Welcome to the show. In this episode, we're going to talk about PowerShell as a global tool. Now, this is really targeted, this conversation is really targeted for developers and DevOps uh, professionals that are working with their CICD pipelines. But even if you're an admin on premises, this is going to be beneficial to you as well. So, uh, you're going to like this. But before we get started, I have some housekeeping things. I've got some notes. Is this your office? No, this is not my office. This is a focus room. How often are you going to turn these things out? So here's the deal. I'm going to turn these out about weekly. Now, not on any specific day, but about every week we'll have something come out. And that could be on a remote location or from here. But it's talking about the interesting things that are happening right now that you can get your hands on and start to work with. Maybe in like right now, we have PowerShell 7 preview release. Preview 3 is just about to release early next week. So yeah, we want to talk about some of that stuff that you can do with it. Another uh, great question that... Um, came in as well is uh dude couldn't think dude dude couldn't think of a better name for the show no couldn't keep having those fun questions come rolling right on in on another note up and coming episodes early next week i've got a very special episode coming out to you on rfcs this is going to contain a conversation about a very particular rfc called error view and all of you are going to be very interested in this i want to show you what we're going to do and then get your feedback on it also coming up next i want to tell you about a few of the episodes that are coming up really quick now early next week we're gonna have an episode on rfc specifically on an rfc called error view this is how errors are displayed on your screen we're going to change it we'd like your feedback i need your feedback i need your help so i'm going to show you where that rfc is how you can go in read and comment on an rfc basically i'm going to show you how to do it so you'll help us so that's a good episode, but also something else really special that's coming up in Preview 3 of PowerShell 7 that is going to be earth moving for everyone, whether you're a developer, whether you're in DevOps, whether you're an admin on premises, is going to be parallel for each or the for each command, you know, for each object that has a parallel option on it. Some of you know what that means, some of you don't. It's really cool, but it can also hurt you. So we're going to start take a look at that. So we've got some great upcoming episodes. Now, really, back to this episode. If you're working with um, CI/CD pipelines, whether you're developer, DevOps, one of the challenges you have, you like to script for things to happen in your pipeline. Well, Windows comes with Windows PowerShell 5.1, and Linux doesn't come with PowerShell. So it makes it more challenging, but we have a solution. See, PowerShell 6 and the soon-to-be-released PowerShell 7, well, those are great cross-platform scripting tools for your CI/CD pipeline. The challenge is, is getting PowerShell uh, if you want to use it. Like I said, Windows has got an, the old Windows PowerShell 5.1 on it. Linux doesn't have anything. I'm going to show you how in a really fast way use something called global tools to be able to use PowerShell, the current release version of PowerShell, which is totally cross-platform. So you can use it for everything at any time, and it's no major installation. First of all, let's get started really quick by taking a look both at the team blogs, and Adita's actually written us a great blog on this topic. So I'm going to open up my browser here, and what I want you to notice is, let me maximize it. I'm just going to search for PowerShell blog. You can see I've typed it in before, wanted to make sure it all worked the way I wanted it to. Right here at the very top, PowerShell automating the world one liner at a time. If you go out, this is where the team puts up their blogs. A lot of great new stuff. And oh, you just see right here, outgrid view returns. I have to say, what Jack made here that works on Linux and Mac is amazing. Yes, we have outgrid view now. Um, and yes, I'm going to do an episode and show you. But this is where the team comes out and talks about the new things that we're working on and that we've released so that you can work with it too. So this is a great, what's the latest goings on in PowerShell. I want to show you Aditya's uh, blog, Introducing PowerShell as a .NET Global Tool. And if I'm really lucky right now, there's going to be a uh, a banner right around in here <laughs> that you can click on that'll take you right to his blog. So if I go into this blog, he explains to you what the purpose of this was and how to install it. And I want to take a step back from this because this is great documentation for you. 
but I kind of want to show you around myself on how to get this set up and what it does. So let me minimize this and I'm going to, I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to start a command prompt. Now you guys know that as a command prompt, this has no PowerShell, right? So if I do get service, uh, it doesn't work. You also know that if you have PowerShell 6, the current release version 622, then you could type PWSH and that would work. Well, it doesn't work. This is a Windows server, so it has uh, PowerShell uh, 5.1. So let me go PowerShell. Okay, that starts up. And just so that you can see it, let me do PS version so that you can see that it's 5.1. This is the one that comes pre-built into Windows. Um, that is not the current release, and we'd love to be able to use the current release, especially for our build pipelines. Let me show you how you can do this. Oh, uh, you know, there's something else I wanted to show you. And I want to do, I want to show you the website here. Uh, you need something on Windows and on Linux for this to work. You need to have, and I'm typing it in here so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to launch this web page so you can see where to get it. You need .NET Core on your systems. And this is cross-platform, right? So right here, free cross-platform, open source. You can go here and download it. You can uh, use the packages and deploy them, but you need to have .NET Core. That's what PowerShell Core runs on, is .NET Core. You need to have that installed or nothing that I'm going to show you works. So I just wanted you to see the web uh, page where it's at and go to the downloads. I want you to notice the current release version today, as in when I'm shooting this, is .NET Core 2.2. Obviously, uh, .NET 3.0 and 3.1 uh, are on their way, um, which the new version of PowerShell 7 will be on .NET Core 3.1. But right now, for what we need, .NET Core 2.2 works just fine. So you need to install that on Windows, or you can put that onto Linux. I will show you what you get now when you do that. So here's how I check to see if that's already been installed. I know this is kind of strange, but I just type the command for that you're going to want to use for this, which is .NET. Now, if you get a return, like I just got a return, notice it's giving me some help there. You know that .NET Core is installed, but what I really want to know is .NET Info to see what version I have, because if it's an older version than this, this isn't going to work very well. So at least start at version 2.2 and go up. From there, you can, uh, you'll see me type this on Linux, because yeah, I'm going to show it to you on Linux. Now, I'm in a command prompt, and I can still do everything that I need to do right from this command prompt. Notice, I don't need to be in PowerShell. So I'm going to say exit and make sure that I'm not, uh, you know what, you don't believe me, do you? So let me just close this all together so that you know that I'm not cheating. I want you to see that I'm using command prompt. PowerShell's never been loaded. Now I want to install. It's not some elaborate installation. It's an executable. You just run it. You just download it and run it. So that's what this does. You can see this in Aditya's blog. So it's .NET and tool, install. And then you put in two dashes and say global. Yes, you can abbreviate that just to G and the and PowerShell. Now, this will install, it will download and install PowerShell as a global tool. Now, what does that actually mean to you when it's done here? So it tells you that you can, ins you can invoke the tool by typing a PWSH, PWSH. Hey, look what just happened. Isn't that incredible? Well, let me show you what it did. Oh, here, you so you can see a better PS version. So you can see I'm running PowerShell 622, the current release version. This is amazing. What it's done is, is let me show you what it did to my path. ENV, and I'm going to type in path. Take a look right here. It added this. So take a look. C colon users, Jason, that's me, dot net tools. Well, we can go out there, but when you go out there, you're going to see PowerShell. You can just execute it right from there. And it put a path statement here in my path so that I can now launch PowerShell and have it and working. So Awesome. Well, wait a minute. Not so awesome. It'd be really awesome if this worked like everywhere, including like Mac and Linux. Well, of course it works everywhere, including Mac and Linux. And let's see, I'm Jason, and I'm going to go to, I know I forgot the name of my Linux box. It's server next. You'd think I could remember that. Now the next question is to see if I can sign, yep, get, a, get signed into it. 
So once I get into my Linux box, what I want you to notice is, is I'm going to clear the screen here, and I'm going to type uh, .NET. Now, uh, the reason that this is a quick way for me to check to see if .NET Core is installed. Again, it, probably the, the best thing for you to do is dash dash info so you can get the right info on it. And so if .NET Core is installed. I've already installed .NET Core on this Linux box. So you can do the same. Once it's installed, now you get, yeah, I typed in the wrong clear. Let's clear it. Now I can do .NET tool install. And I want you to notice I'm typing exactly the same thing as I did on Windows. PowerShell. And it already told me it's already installed. Now, I did pre-install this just so you didn't have to wait for it. So let me go ahead and type PWSH. And there we go. PowerShell is now running. Let's get it up here. On Linux, on Windows, very easy to get it there for when you need it for either your CI CD pipelines or if you just need the current version of PowerShell. This is a fast way to grab it without going through a big deployment. You can do some quick testing this way. So basically, PowerShell as a global tool is another easy way for anybody to get PowerShell when they need it, the current release version of PowerShell when they need it. For those of you working in DevOps in your pipelines, this is gonna be a huge help to you. So try it out, give us some feedback, let us know what you think. And hang on, just a couple of more things before we leave. That's all I got for the global tools right now. Remember that when we come back very soon, early next week, we've got that uh, episode on the RFC and particular error view, and I need your help. So please help me watch the episode. But more importantly, I need you to go out and comment and help us understand what we should be doing. So give us some ideas while we're working on it. Look for that episode. And until then, PowerShell rocks. And remember, hey, Help someone.